Okay, let's see who I can see on the screen. Caroline McGuigan, if you can hear me, I just want to check the sound is okay. Just do that, but I think you can. Yeah, very good. Very good. So let's see. We've two chats in. Uh, good evening, all. It's from Sally Hayden. And Don Brennan says, welcome, everybody. So that answers my next question is, is Don on? And he is. Now, Don, you should be able to unmute yourself. Thanks, Noel. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay, you're over your COVID. I'm just about over COVID. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Well, I don't know. Maybe you want to share some tips with some of the people on. There seems to be a lot of COVID around these days. It seems to be back on the back on the up again. You know. So, uh, how did you find it? Was it was it difficult? I or like, was... I didn't like it at all. You didn't like it at all. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I presume you took all your own advice. I did. Good I did. man. Good man. You have to yeah. follow your own advice. Still taking it. Still got a bit of an old cough. Okay. So, you have no camera on, Don, do you? Uh, oh, that's true. Well, you can see, see you. I'm alive. There oh, you we can see you now. Oh, you're looking well. Thank you very much. You're looking yeah. well. You're looking well. Good. Really good, except for a tickle. A tickle. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll forgive you when you're speaking this evening, then, if you are. Rajvinder, are you here? Uh, I see Dr. Chitrali. I see Raj as well. I'm just on. Oh. Hi, Raj. You should be able to unmute. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Welcome, how everyone. Are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, Dr. Dan. <laughs> Good to see you. Dr. Chitrali, are you on? He is there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello everyone. Hey, how are you? Hello, hello. Are you? I'm good. Thank you. Nice how are you, Dr. Brennan? I'm very good now. Thank you very much. I'm over it. I'm over it. That's good. For the human positive test, a negative test, though. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. So when are you coming back up the hills? When am I coming back up the hills? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Take it easy. <laughs> I still care for somebody else who has. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Okay, I don't see Nahid on. Not yet. Yeah, she might be on in a minute. So let's see, we've 83 people on. So what time is it? Uh, 7.33. So we'll just wait a we'll wait, we'll wait a minute or two. Um oh, I see Teresa Fendon is there. Good. Nice to see Teresa there. Yeah, and we'll we'll send the recording out of this to everybody so that they, you know, you mightn't get everything this evening, you know, but we will send the recording out um, tomorrow so that you can go back over because we've a lot of things to cover this evening about the new courses that we're going to be offering. Um, and they're all conditional, really. We have to see, uh, you know, we've been talking about doing new courses. We did our seven lesson course, which possibly everybody on this call has actually done. And it's definitely going to be a prerequisite to doing the, the next course. That's for sure that you'll have to do the seven lesson course that's available on our website. And we ran that seven lesson course. I don't know how many times, maybe, I, I don't know. I'd have to look back maybe 15 times or something like that. We ran that course. Uh, but there's fantastic, fantastic knowledge in that. And it's, it's a great basis. It's a great foundation for anybody wanting to go further with Ayurveda because it covers an, an awful lot of the basics. But Obviously, like there's a whole lot more to Ayurveda than what we covered in, in that course. And, um, you know, because to have a degree in Ayurveda, like Dr. Chitali has and Dr. Rajvinder has, like it's a six year degree course. It's a full university course. And um, so, I mean, that's a substantial undertaking. And really, you can't do that anywhere in Europe that I'm aware of anyway. I think there was a master's degree at one stage in, in Middlesex University, which I think Dr. Brennan undertook uh, many years ago. And there was a, a certificate course in Ayurveda from a university in Slovenia, which I did and completed in March. But none of those things are, you know, the full Ayurveda degree, the, the, the BAMS, the Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery degree. So like the, the ideal thing is that everybody would do, that everybody that wants to get involved in Ayurveda would, would do that degree. Uh, but as that's not available in Europe at the moment, that's not really practical. It's not really practical for people to go to India for you know, you'd need to be going when you're young, really, you know, to go to India for uh, for six years to, to study Ayurveda. So our, our thing is to figure out how do we bring this forward? How do we bring Ayurveda forward? Because, I mean, it's very obvious that there's huge interest in Ayurveda. Now, 
you don't even have to term it Ayurveda. There, there's huge interest in some alternatives in natural healthcare. There's huge interest in, you know, how to live your life properly, how to live your life so that you don't get sick. There's huge interest in eating good food, in having a good daily routine. And really Ayurveda is set up to deliver all of that. So our challenge is, is that, you know, how do we bring this forward so that people who are interested in doing this and people who are spreading this knowledge can actually go out and spread it in a very efficient and a very effective manner. Because obviously when you're taking on people's health issues, you have to be very, very careful. And, and the primary, pr primary thing is that you absolutely have to know what you're talking about and you have to be well-trained in what you're talking about. So that's what our aim was to come up with a course of study that we could offer to people that I would not say by any means is the final step. In actual fact, I, I would say definitely it's not the final step, but that it would be a, um, a, a very good basis for going further, but also enough of a basis for you to be able to start some form of a practice. And what we, we titled it really, Dr. Chatelli came up with the, uh, with the title was an Ayurvedic, an Ayurvedic coach. So it would be an Ayurvedic lifestyle coach. But what we wanted to do in that is because we know that there are some people that are interested in more gaining more Ayurvedic knowledge and doing more of our courses, but maybe they've absolutely no interest in going forward to being a practitioner. They just want to, to gain more knowledge. And obviously, in order to become a practitioner where you're giving out lifestyle advice, you know, you have to start off at the basis and work your way through. So really what we've done is we've divided the course up into three sections, into three courses. And Dr. Brennan in a while is going to talk about the first course and what we're going to cover in the first course. But fundamentally, the first course is a, an introduction to Ayurveda, but a much more in-depth introduction to Ayurveda than the one that we did. So it's going to go a lot into the sub doshas and all these things, but I'm not going to steal Dr. Brennan's thunder because he's going to explain that in, in a lot more detail. And that's going to be a, a 100 hour course, which we're hoping to start in October. The second course is uh, uh, dietetics and nutrition. So obviously nutrition is a, a huge, huge part of Ayurveda. I mean, I think I would go so far as to say that Ayurveda would believe that if you're not eating good, healthy food, that you, it's impossible really to be healthy. I mean, there might be an absence of disease, but it's really, it's not possible to be fully healthy and to prevent disease if you're eating bad food and processed foods and unhealthy foods. And a, a huge amount of Ayurvedic knowledge is, is based around the correct way to eat food, the correct foods to eat. And again, this is an area where there's a phenomenal level of growth in this whole area. Actually, I was watching a program on... Um, BBC the other day called Country Five. Well, maybe some of you saw it because we have a lot of people on from the UK this evening. And it was about regenerative ag agriculture. And it was comparing two wheat farmers. And one wheat farmer was a conventional wheat farmer. And he used pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and artificial fertilizer, which was all necessary to grow his crops. And one of the big problems with it is that the price of all of these things has gone through the roof because they're all based on, you know, a lot of fertilizers, they, they, they're based, the nitrogen comes from oil and gas, you know, that's the component and the other items that are mined as well. And the same with pesticides and fungicides and all that. So he had his farm, he was growing his conventional wheat, he was working, spraying, you know, every couple of weeks he was out spraying his field and doing all these things to kill the weeds and bring the yield on and everything like that. And then there was a farmer beside him who had uh, several years back gone into regenerative farming. And what he did in his field was he just planted different types of wheat. It wasn't just one type of wheat. He had many different types of wheat in the field. And uh, he didn't spray herbicides or pesticides or any of those things on his field. And it ended up that uh, the yield from the the guy who was spraying was was a lot higher the, the yield per acre but when he worked out the finances of it because he was paying so much in pesticides and herbicides and all these things and all the damage that was associated with it income was less than the guy who was just growing the wheat uh, in an organic manner he was getting a much higher price for his his produce and uh, doing far less work 
doing way, way less work. And also in the same program, they were talking about these new ways of, of uh, developing uh, fertilizers for the fields that don't involve petroleum. In actual fact, they were using, one of the examples was waste from a potato, a crisp plant in, in the UK. And they were using that and mixing in some other things to develop pellets that go in the same machinery that other people use to, uh, to spread the normal uh, fertilizers. But the, the carbon footprint of this was 90% less than it was in, in conventional uh, growing. And the great thing about it was is that the conventional farmer was completely open to change. He was really open to change because he'd seen the price of his fertilizer go from, I think it was 200 euro a ton up to 800 euro a ton because of what's going on in the Ukraine and everything like that. So he was just saying it's not feasible for him to carry on that way. So the, he, but he was very happy that that was coming along because he recognized the damage that his way of farming was doing to the environment. So I hope some of you saw that program. It was called Country File. It was on BBC there a while back. But the point I'm trying to get at is, is that there's a huge awakening of interest in growing proper food, good food that's free from pesticides and, and, and free from herbicides. And like a lot of really big things are happening. Like in Germany, I was reading the other day, there are 42,000 organic farms in Germany, 42,000 organic farms. Over 10% of their land is under organic production. And the aim is that within the next five years, they'll have 20% of their land under organic production, like which is a huge, huge thing. I, I can't actually say how much of, of Ireland's farmland is under organic production, but I, I can't imagine that it would be anywhere near there. But still, the, the interest is there from people to start growing food and the interest is there from like from the farmers to do it and from people to actually buy it as well. There's a huge interest in supporting local farmers markets and all that. And all that is really, really good news. For Ayurveda, because back to the point, original point I was making is that to be healthy, you need to eat healthy food and you need to be eating that food that's free from pesticides and free from fungicides and these things. And another big, big thing that happened during the week is that um, there was a ruling about uh, glycophosphates, uh, which is known to you and me as Roundup, but it's quite widely used in the agriculture, in, in intensive agriculture. It's also used by people in their gardens. You can go into any um, hardware store and buy Roundup, but uh, it was, they had won a case where they had said it, it, you know, it wasn't carcinogenic. They had been sued. They'd lost the case. They it had gone to a higher court. The higher court had overturned the ruling, but the ruling now has been overturned again. And there are thousands upon thousands of claims waiting to be processed against Bayer. It was a Monsanto product, but Bayer bought over Monsanto several years back. But they're in the pipeline now for, you know, a disastrous situation because it's turning out now that it's, it's been shown that it is carcinogenic and that they knew all along that it was carcinogenic, but the profits from it, I mean, it, it's worth billions. It, the, the profits from it are billions, but these law cases that are coming up are huge. So hopefully we'll see an end to things like that. And people just simply won't accept having these things sprayed on their food, food you know? So RS says the country file program was on Sunday, the 26th of June was excellent and would still be available on the BBC iPlayer. So yeah, it's worth looking at that. It's nothing to do with Ayurveda, it's to do with, the production of food but for me anytime i'm watching telly and i see something like that i get very inspired by it because it means that the level of consciousness out there is changing and as far as i can see it's it's beginning to change rapidly and there are so many people interested in healthier food and as i say that's a big part of ayurveda is is you know, uh, producing healthy food and cooking healthy food and using the herbs and spices and all that. And we're going to cover all of that in our second course on diet, dietetics and nutrition. So all of the effects of food on Vata, Pitta, Kapha, all of the effects on the different spices, what effect they have on your physiology, which ones you can use for helping to sort different disorders, if they increase Pitta or decrease Pitta or whatever they do is, is going to be very in-depth covered in that. And also in that we'll have cookery courses as well so that people will be trained in that course how to cook food now many of you have probably done dr ridsvinder's um courses already but there's going to be we'll cover what dr ridsvinder did plus a lot more in this course and then that leaves the possibility open for people who maybe want to look at opening up uh, organic restaurants because i feel that's the next big thing like we've chains of McDonald's all over the place and Burger King all over the place. Why don't we have chains of, of, of health food stores that you know are serving up good, healthy food for people? Uh, the reason we don't have it now is because really the demand is not there, but the demand is going to be there. And Ayurveda is well placed to fulfill that demand. So that second 100 hour course 
is going to start in uh, February of next year is the plan, okay? And then the third course is a 300 hour course. And that's for the people who want to go on to become Ayurvedic uh, lifestyle coaches. And that's going to be really where we get into the nuts and bolts of the advices that you can start giving to people who are suffering from specific disorders. So people who are diabetic or people who are arthritic or people who have migraine or whatever the thing happens to be. Now, we all know Ayurveda doesn't treat diseases anyway. It just treats the body. But obviously, if, if there's symptoms coming up like that, it means something is wrong in the body. And so uh, th this training will be, well, how do you recognize that? How do you figure out what's gone wrong in the body? And how do you address it so that you can bring the body back into back into balance again? And that will be a 300 hour, a 300 hour course. On top of that, then, because Ayurveda covers so many areas of life, like it covers the environment, it covers food production, it covers the meditation, the mental aspect of it, it covers the treatments that people can do, the Abhyangas, the Shiradharas, and all of these things, and it also covers the consultations and the advices that we can give people. So on top of that, uh, we will also have some separate courses um, where we will train people who are interested in being able to do things like offer people abhyangas and shiradharas and nasias and katibastis and pizza chilies and all these other wonderful, wonderful Ayurvedic treatments. Uh, we'll train people how to do them and we'll train people to know why they would give someone this particular treatment because again, it's vata, pitta, kapha imbalance and these treatments are dependent on what's gone out of balance and uh, so certain treatments will be ideal with certain oils will be ideal for certain people and there'll be contraindications for them with other people and we are, we are, we are going to do that training but that's actually separate to the 500 hour course that we're going to be offering and uh, Dr. Ridvinder is going to talk a little bit about that this evening as well and there may be people out there who already are massage therapists or already run something like that who are interested in doing that training but have really no interest in becoming an Ayurvedic lifestyle coach and that's absolutely fine those courses can be taken completely separately but the people who want to go on to do the 500 hour course there may be people there who are interested in being lifestyle coaches, but again, have no interest in doing massage or shiradharas. And that's fine. You do not, it's not compulsory to do the, any of those courses in order to do the 500 hour course. But what is compulsory for everybody, especially for the people doing the 500 hour courses that they have to do the first 100 hour course, the second 100 hour course, and then the 300 hour course. The people doing the Ayurvedic treatment courses with Dr. Ridgevinder Will, will have to have done the seven lesson free course and so will everybody else. So I'm presuming that, uh, I'm presuming that, um, uh, sorry, Francis, you're asking me questions. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of talking here. How long is the meeting going to last? I don't know, Francis, whatever, I don't know. We'll record it anyway. If you have to go, go and you can, you can uh, come back. You can, you can watch it again tomorrow, you know? Uh, so there's going to be a lot of different opportunities. There's going to be a lot of different areas that people they may people may already be trained in reflexology or trained in whatever it happens to be. And this may be just something that you can add to your bow, uh, you know, and th that you can offer to your patients. The other uh, thing that we want to be, be clear with people is that the course that I did in the university in Slovenia, the Alma Mata University in Slovenia, that was a course for healthcare professionals. And there was a lot of medical doctors on that courses on that course, and there was some uh, other people involved. And in, there weren't medical doctors, but there were uh, pharmacists and things like that. And the reason I got on that course is because I had done some Ayurvedic training in India in 2016. And the person who organizes that course is Gordana Markovic. She's an absolutely brilliant Ayurvedic doctor and just a, a wonderful teacher as well. And one of the questions I asked her at the end of that course was, if people do our 500-hour course. Will they, would they be eligible to then take your course as a healthcare professional? And she said, yes, they would. So that's obviously an immediate extra thing that you could consider going on to do when you finish the, uh, our course is to do that university certification. Because we're not trying to say that by any means when you do our course that that's the end of your Ayurvedic knowledge. Actually, Ayurvedic knowledge never ends. It just goes on and on. Any of the devices will tell you that. So your training goes on and on. But what our responsibility is, is to make 
you sufficient and capable enough that you can do basic lifestyle advice and have a very, very deep understanding of, of what's going on in, in Ayurveda. So there are many, many opportunities either for self-knowledge or to develop a career, a pathway to a new career. I think there will be huge opportunities coming up in the, in the future around everything to do with natural living and healthy living and everything. Well, I put a post on Facebook recently. Uh, we gave away one of our webinars for free, the arthritis webinar. I think we ended up with about 17,000 clicks on that on that facebook post and there was hundreds and hundreds of really positive comments about it as well so that to me shows that there's a massive amount of interest that's out there you know so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask dr brennan to give us a little overview of the first course and uh which which we're hoping to start in october and then when dr brennan has done an overview of that i'll come back and I'll give you uh, the dates that that's going to be starting and how you can have an expression of interest in doing that particular course, you know. So, Dr. Brennan, I'm just going to hand over to you. Great. Thanks, Noel. And thanks for that comprehensive introduction and overview. And um, uh, welcome to everybody tonight on this talk. And I think what you're doing is an incredibly positive thing. I think it's um, uh, profound. And I think in reality, we're facing a global situation of absolute confusion and dementia in, in an incomprehensible um, uh, conflict in Europe. And in reality, it's a reflection of a very confused collective awareness of humanity at the moment, which is going through great change. And as Noel points out, there's, there are many, many uh, green shoots of positivity to be seen as uh, humanity is moving in one direction towards solution to, to ancient problems. And on the other hand, um, walking towards the abyss with the uh, incomprehensible um, chaos of, of, of war. But every one of us has a positive part to play in all of this by virtue of where we choose to put our attention. And I would be asking every one of you to attend to what is true, real, valid, valuable, natural, appropriate, human, and right. And I think a very profound way of enlivening these values for the collective in your own awareness is placing your awareness on this ancient tradition of health, which is true, which is life. So I think if you choose to go ahead in the autumn, you'll be doing something valuable for yourself, but you'll be contributing your awareness towards an awakening in humanity of more reality and more humanity and more wisdom and more underlying integrity. And so what we've got is a course which is orientated towards health. We're not training anybody to be a doctor and to heal disease. What we want is we want for you to have a deep, profound, intuitive faculty as to your own health and that wisdom of health in your own life to be able to use that in order to be a catalyst for others to move in the same evolutionary direction and find more balance in their own lives. So the whole course that we have structured is structured around balance. And that's very easy in Ayurveda because Ayurveda is three quarters perhaps about how to be healthy. And then when you have the understanding and the insight of health, it's then can be possible to actually, by contrast, um, recognize the deviations from health, which could become increasingly um, discomfort and disease. So that's why our course is structured very much around health. So um, we've taken the basic structure from Oh, the Indian government recommendation for training for Ayurveda around the world. And now while they have done great work in putting 
this sort of structures together for that sort of training, they have absolutely no help to offer us when we ask for their assistance. So we have to structure our own courses on their basis. And their fundamental health coach course would have been 500 hours, which is divided into half homework and half, you know, theoretical teaching. Um, and so we follow their format and, and our first 100 hours will end up to be um, 50 hours of theoretical training and then the 25 hours of practical training hands on and then 25 hours that you were expected to do your homework. So we'll be giving you homework. Um, but of course, it depends if you're interested in taking this as training you will be interested in the homework. If you're doing this for your own interest, uh, you can do what you like, which is always a joy. Um, but uh, we will have um, 12 two hour sessions of lectures and each of, of uh, us by just will be uh, taking three lessons each. So there'll be uh, four trees, 12, and Nola will be keeping the eye on us as usual and keeping us um, on the straight and narrow. And um, uh, so, th so th those will be the theoretical knowledge side of things. And then there will be four days where we will meet up um, for at least six hour sessions each day. And two, two of us Vijas will take um, each day. Um, so that over the, uh, the course, there'll be uh, four practical days and um, 12 uh, lectures of theory. And um, maybe I'll just run through the, the themes um, that uh, we'll be covering on the, on the uh, course so that you have a feeling for what's involved. So we'll start with the first lecture and the first lecture of course has to start with health. So we'll go through that whole Ayurvedic concept of health from, from so many angles. I mean, there, there is the understanding in Ayurveda that we're ultimately consciousness and there is um, uh, the reality of our physical structure as well. And there's what connects the two from that silent awareness of our own pure essence. It is the mind that connects with that consciousness at its deepest level. And it is the mind which connects with the physiology through the senses and the nervous system. And so we have our consciousness, we have our mind, we have our body, and we have the environment. And of course, health is about the relationships, the relationships between consciousness and mind, between mind and body, between us and our, our universe. And so Ayurveda handles all of these relationships and Ayurveda is all about the balance and integrity in all of these areas. So we will be uh, discussing how from all those angles, um, including the, the, the concept of health being a universal phenomena where your universe and your connection with your universe is uh, fulfilling and enlightening and invigorating. Um, and we'll deal with the whole Vedic perspective on the mind and, and psychology. And we'll deal with the, the reality of the elemental nature of, of the universe and Ayurveda's description of the elemental nature of our physiology and their connections there. So we will, we will be dealing with health. And um, that would be the first lecture. The second lecture would move on to the Ayurveda practical perspective on uh, how, to, how to be healthy. And that would include starting with yoga and pranayama and lifestyle. And um, we'll deal with physical urges and their relationship with our health, with digestion and diet, exercise, all the evidence-based approaches, but looking at it from the ancient Ayurvedic uh, uh, descriptions of a healthy life and the purpose of that of course will be to <clears throat> to have you thinking about your life and these various aspects of your life so that you can spot <clears throat> where you're doing very well and 
<clears throat> where you could improve. And so hopefully you will out of that be making some changes in your own life to make it more healthy. And the third lecture, we're still on health. We're talking about the balanced the doshas. We're talking about the understanding of the doshas from a deeper level, because really it's all about our relationships within ourselves, with ourselves, with our own thoughts, feelings, with our environment, with our physiology. And it's the quality. The qualities are so fundamental, they're even more fundamental than the vata, pitta, and kapha. And so um, we will be dealing with the qualities and uh, we'll be dealing with the, the whole understanding then of our of vata, pitta, and kapha from that deeper level and co coming to an understanding of your balanced state, your state of, of your constitution. And we'll continue our theme of health and balance in the fourth lecture when we're talking about the balanced path in nature, the balanced pitta in nature, the balanced calf in nature, the balanced mixed natures. So you get more perspective on your own. What is your nature? What's the nature of your mind? What's the nature of your feelings? What's the nature of your, your uh, social constitution? What's the nature of your physical constitution? And uh, then the signs and symptoms of, of balance and imbalance. So when then the, the, the issue of imbalance is coming up, it's with reference to how to restore that balance. So those first four lectures are bringing us the whole concepts of health in very complete and thorough point of perspective from an Ayurveda point of view. And now we go on to the next four, which really is the essence of health, because, you know, we transform well, everything we take in and out of all that we've taken in nourishment and every level of mind and feelings and food and transform it into our constitution, into our nature, into our state of balance and imbalance. And so we'll move on then into the whole concepts of the, um, uh, the subtle transformations, um, the whole transformations of the digest fires and the, the um, the, the different types of fires, balanced fire, and how we create that balanced fire, and the imbalances in the fires, which can be due to bat and pit and kapha, and furthermore, the different 13 fundamental fires that are responsible for all the cells and all the tissues of our body. So that will be in lecture five and six, then we'll be getting practical again, the strategies to ensure that all of that's functioning appropriately to create really good health. And that would involve the taking care of your digestion, take care of the routines, the regimes of eating, uh, digestives, and, um, and then talking about the food and how it changes with the seasons. We then focus, having gone through the processes, we're focusing then onto the foods and, and how Ayurveda analyzes food in terms of its qualities. Because again, it's relationship, my qualities and the food I'm eating, are they appropriate qualities to bring a balance for me? Um, and then the qualities uh, affect the, the, the food in terms of tastes and how through tastes we subliminally um, a process, everything we're taking in. And immediately, even from the taste, the whole physiology is, is transformed, either to its balance or the other. And so uh, the tastes and, the, and the, uh, then the subtle energies of food. So we want to go into all of that, the elemental nature of food and how that influences our elements and our, our constitution. And then the various stages of digestion that we go through when we take in food, you know, the initial energy or, or depletion from the food and then the subtler uh, uh, influences that the food has as we further digest it. And then in the eighth lecture, we'll go through the various different foods, energies, the grains, the pulses, the vegetables, maybe some simple recipes. So having spent four lectures on health and four lectures getting much more into the details of the, the uh, processing and of nourishment and, and transforming, we're to the, uh, our own tissues. We're, we're now in the area of the seven tissues and, um, and understanding the dosha aspects of the tissue and what are the real good qualities of tissues? How do we recognize them? And, 
how do we recognize where tissues are getting disturbed or out of balance and, and the very channels that uh, communication within those tissues and uh, all of it is you know with reference as well to our own well-being and we may well spot areas that need strengthening or tissues that need nourishing uh, for ourselves as we go through that and then we're coming to the whole concept of the outcome then of all the transformations is it health or just or is it is it excretions or is it uh, toxins and you know this then starts to give the explanation for how the disease gets into our system and how it progresses and can get deep and so that therefore is is um just interesting as a, a view of the outcome of all the processes we've been discussing and in at lecture 11 then when we have uh, any little buildup of toxins in any area, how are we going to clear them? And we have the concepts of Panchakarma then and of Rasayana. Rasayana was rejuvenation treatments. So we'll do that on lecture 11. And in lecture 12, we'll, we'll summarize the whole thing, coming back to the whole concepts of um, health and mind and body and, and the whole review of the course um, and questions and answers. and you know, conclude with the whole purpose of it, which is, of course, we want to be happy. And while then we're uh, going through all that theory and um, learning as we go and hopefully refining our own health uh, through the knowledge we're gaining, then we will, we will have the uh, practical seminars, you know, on uh, the first one will be more about our own work-life balance and our own daily regime, seeing where there are areas we could improve. The second session then would be more around the kitchen and the equipment and the herbs and the, and the uh, making of the basic Ayurvedic condiments for good health. And then the third session would be more to do with the exercise and the yoga and Pranayama and maybe some home remedies and fourth session, maybe some pulse diagnosis, some skin care, some. So these will be the more practical sessions then in the course. So that should give a, a good overview of what the uh, autumn course will uh, would involve. And I'll hand back to Noel now to give more details. Okay, that's great, Don. So that's so I just want to be I just want to be so that people are clear on it. Okay, so the first course. Uh, is a hundred hour course, okay? It consists of 25 hours of uh, lectures done by the Vijas online, okay? And they're gonna be done on, the, the plan at the moment is to start on the 11th of October, which is a Tuesday, and run them every Tuesday and Thursday for six weeks, which gives 12 lectures in total. And each of the Vijas will be taking it in turn to do lectures on their specific area. Uh, and that will cover roughly 25 hours of, of instruction. We're then going to have two weekends in person, okay, where we'll do training in person. And the dates at the moment, these are just provisional, but unless there's a very valid reason for changing them, they, they'll stay. The 29th and 30th of October, which is the October Bank Holiday weekend, and the 19th and 20th of November, which, which will actually end the course, okay, the 19th and 20th of November. And there'll also be 50 hours of home study as well, okay? So you'll be given things to do in between the lectures, okay? Now, the in-person is more than likely going to be in Dublin. We haven't selected a venue yet. It'll depend on the number of people that we're dealing with. But we want to get sort of a, you know, um, as many people as possible from the UK coming over for, for, for that as well, you know? So what we will do when we get the numbers together, if we get the numbers together, is we will form a WhatsApp group and hopefully some of the Irish people might open their homes up to the uh, to their colleagues coming over from the UK because I can tell you Dublin's a very expensive city and uh, we don't want people that be spending two, three hundred euro a night on a hotel when they could stay with somebody's in somebody's house up in Dublin. So we'll try to facilitate that uh, through, through some groups. So the idea would be that the people coming from the UK for the weekend could fly in on a, a Ryanair flight. If you, if you book it early enough, it's not going to be very expensive on, on the Saturday morning. 
uh, we'll we'll get somewhere near the airport. Hope you know if we can, and then fly back out on a Sunday evening or a Monday morning, depending on your. The first weekend is a bank holiday weekend. I think it's a bank holiday weekend in the UK as well, so people can can get back to work then for the for the Monday or Tuesday. That would be the structure of that course. So fifty hours of homework, twenty five hours of lectures over twelve weeks, and two weekends of in person. Uh, in-person instructions. Can you give the weekend dates again? Well, you're going to get a recording of this anyway, okay? So the 29th and 30th of October, which is the October bank holiday weekend in Ireland. So I'm presuming it's the same in the UK. I can't be 100% certain about that. And the 19th and 20th of November is our plan for the uh, for the for the in-person training you know because even though there's a lot of things you can do online i mean and we know that because we you know we're the experts at doing stuff online it's still great to be able to meet up with the vages and it's still great to be uh uh it's still not a holiday for us no until christmas you don't get bank holidays over there in the uk they're working you too hard uh the um Anyway, I, it, it doesn't matter. It's a Saturday and a Sunday anyway. The Monday is a bank holiday in Ireland. It's called the... I don't know. Are you familiar with that holiday, Don, in, in the UK? There's no holiday. There's uh, no bank holiday in October in the UK. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, it'll be the Saturday and the Sunday anyway. So that would mean if people are going back to work on the Monday, they'd have to fly back on the, on the Sunday evening. But the course will finish at a reasonable time on the Sunday anyway. And then the 19th and 20th of November as well. So they would be the date starting on the 11th of October, which is a Tuesday. And it would run from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock. And that would be Tuesday, Thursday, every Tuesday and Thursday for six weeks, which is 12 lectures. And then in the middle of that, the 29th and 30th of October, we will have a hands-on um, course in, in, in somewhere in Ireland. And on the 19th and 20th of November, the same thing in uh, uh, somewhere as well, you know. So I don't think it's a bank holiday in Scotland. So it looks like there is no bank, October bank holiday in the UK. So um, anyway, as I say, it's a Sunday. So if you were back to work, you just have to arrange to fly back on the, on the Sunday evening. Now, this course is for everybody. It's not just for people who want to go on to do... Um, you know, further training. You could do just, just this course and not go on any further. That's and it would just be for the purposes of of, of self knowledge. So, what time are the evening online classes? Yeah, seven to nine. As I yeah, seven to nine o'clock. So, listen, just listen to the, the, the everything is in this. I'm going to explain everything in this. And if you if you miss something, you can just get it on the on the on the recording again. You know. So, just to recap on that, twelve lectures on a choose starting on Tuesday, the eleventh of October. Every Tuesday and Thursday for six weeks, straight through from seven o'clock until nine o'clock. And then um, and then the 29th, 30th of October, we have a, uh, a that's a Saturday and a Sunday. We have in-house training, in-person training somewhere in Dublin. And the 19th and 20th of November, we'll have in-person training as well for there. And that would cover the first block of the course. The seventh block of the course would start on the um, the second course. Now, we're not going to go into details of what we're covering in the second course here, OK, because we, we'll do a, a separate webinar on that, because each of these courses are booked separately, you know. But the plan for that is to start in on the uh, on the 17th of January. And um, same thing, uh, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays for six weeks for the diet and nutrition course as well, you know, and the uh, the weekends there would be the 28th and 29th of January and the 25th and 26th of February would be the, the plan for that. And then the, the, the last course, which is the 300 hours, the 300 hour course. And again, we're not going to go into too many details about we, what we'll be covering in that, but that'll be going way more in depth. And that's for the people who want to go on to be the, the lifestyle coach, coach. We'll start on the 14th of March and it will run Tuesdays and Thursdays for 12 weeks. So Tuesdays and Thursdays for 12 weeks. Okay. And then we will have a week long training from Saturday, the 6th of June until Sunday, the 11th of June. OK, so from Saturday, the 6th of June to Sunday, the 11th of June. And um, then we have a break for the summer and then we do another six weeks starting on the 12th of September for Tuesdays and Thursdays for six weeks on the 12th of September. And then we finalize the course with an in-session, with an in-house session on the 28th, the 29th and the 30th of October um, uh, of next year. And that would be the completed 500, 500 hour course, you know, 
Uh, so everything will be recorded. All of the online sessions will be recorded and people will have access to the recordings, the same as on our, our previous courses. Uh, people will have access to them. Uh, so if you can't make an evening, that's okay. It would be rather essential. I think if you're going on to do the uh, lifestyle coach um, you know, to get that certificate, I think it would be completely essential that you would have to attend the in-person the in-person sessions. I mean, with the other ones, we can probably record them all right. But uh, for, for people who want to go on and actually do the full training, it would be very important because we're going to be teaching the pulse diagnosis and we're going to be teaching other things as well. So what we're going to do, the cost now of the course is we're going to break it up because some people may just be interested in doing sections. Like there may be someone out there who runs a restaurant or gives diet advice that is just interested in the diet, di diet dietetics and nutrition course. They're not interested in the other things. And that, that's fine. There may be people who are interested in the first course that Dr. Just Brennan talked about, but don't want to go on to be lifestyle coaches or whatever. So the first course, the 100 hour course is going to cost 300 euro. Uh, the second course, which is also a 100 hour course is going to cost 300 euro. And the third course, which is a 300 hour course is going to cost 900 euro. And uh, so the whole course, the whole 500 hour course is the total cost of that is going to be 1500 euro. Now that doesn't include your flights. It doesn't include your meals. It doesn't include your accommodation. It, it does include the online sessions and it includes, you know, obviously the renting of the hotel room where, or wherever we're going to do the in-person sessions, you know, but it'll be your responsibility to get over here and back. We will, depending on the numbers, try to get something together where we can, you know, help people with accommodation in Ireland because, you know, it, it is very expensive and we do want people to have a, you know, we want to build up a community here. So it'd be nice if people are coming in from the UK or Scotland or wherever they're coming in from, that they could meet up and stay with the course participants in. Ireland as well if, if they're willing to open their houses to them but generally Irish people tend to be very uh, generous in, in, in that way and that also will, will, will keep the prices down as well you know so now this is um, when we when I started looking at putting together a course because Dr. Ridgevinder was asking about it and some of the other doctors were asking about it Dr. Ridgevinder has been very keen to have a course going for a, for a long time and every time I, I looked at it I just said, my God, there's just an incredible amount of work involved in putting together a course. It, there's, just, there's just a huge amount of work together in putting it together. And there is a huge amount of work in putting it together. And all of this will be conditional on the level of interest that we get. If we get five or six people coming back saying, yeah, I, I'd like to do this course, it, to be perfectly honest, it's just not going to be feasible. It's absolutely not going to be feasible because there's just too much work to put into the thing. So we would be directing people maybe to some other course that they, that they, that they could do, you know? So this is conditional on getting the number. So what I would like you to do is if you, is to send me an email after this, uh, noel at ayurveda.ie saying, I'm really interested or I'm slightly interested, or I'm, you don't have to send one if you're not interested, okay? But just uh, like, just say, this This has really grabbed my attention. I really want, we want people who are passionate about Ayurveda, that you like, we, we hope that we're talking to people that have done our courses, that have had consultations with our doctors, that have maybe seen their lives already improved through Ayurveda, or maybe friends of theirs or family, they've seen their lives through Ayurveda. Because really, if you don't have the belief and the, you know, the passion about it, that's really what's going to carry this thing forward in, in, in a big, big way. You know, it's not just about making money or having a career. It's about a belief that this is a system of healthcare that can relieve suffering for people. That's the ultimate goal of Ayurveda is to have a disease-free, suffering-free society. It's a, it's a big, big goal, but nonetheless, that, that's what it is, you know. So if your passion is in that area and you feel that you, you really want to do this and this, this seems really good, then drop me an email. Now, on our website, you can also book the first course. I've opened it up for booking, but only with a refundable deposit. Okay, it's a hundred euro refundable deposit. So that's a real way of expressing your interest is to go on and just book that. If the course doesn't happen for whatever reason, we don't get the numbers or something happens like that, that's re completely refundable. The whole amount of it is, is completely refundable. But we just want to see what the level of interest is out there because obviously our other courses were free 
And, you know, we had over 20,000 people register for our courses, but that's fine when something is free and we, we didn't have any problem doing them for free because it was COVID. We were in lockdown. It was it gave us a great opportunity to get the knowledge out there and people were locked in their homes. They weren't going anywhere anyway. And it was a free course and it was a brilliant course. And we just I'd say we got most people through referrals. But this is a different thing. This is your, you know, you're paying for the course. You know, I think it's a very reasonable fee. I've looked at other fees. I've tried to keep the price down as low as possible. There is costs, obviously, involved in paying the doctors and all these different things, the hotels and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's it, it, it's a it's a reasonable cost. But if you're definitely interested in doing it, then go on and book and pay the deposit. And as I say, if for some reason we don't get the numbers. We will, uh, we will refund that to you anyway, you know. So that's what we wanted to discuss tonight. I just want to unmute Dr. Rajvinder for a minute because the other thing I mentioned at the start of the course is that Ayurveda covers a huge range of knowledge, okay? And one of the things that Ayurveda covers is, is treatments, you know? So things like Abhyangas and Shiradharas and Nasias and Katibastis, maybe some of you have experienced these treatments. Maybe some of you have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, but Dr. Rajvinder is an expert. She's run our Ayurvedic spa in Ireland for, since she came here actually in 2007, she's, she's been involved in that. So she's very, very highly qualified and she is going to organize some courses to train people how to do these treatments. And this will be of interest to people who work in uh, massage clinics or healthcare clinics. And this will be separate from the 500 hour course. So, you know, some people may definitely want to add these on because I know Dr. Rajvinder says with patients with certain conditions, doing an Abhyanga or doing an Asya is really great. It really helps them come along. And some people offering, you know, Ayurvedic lifestyle advice may want to offer these treatments as well. So for those people, we're going to offer this training. So Dr. Ritzvinder, I'll hand over to you if you want to say a few words about that. Yeah. Thank you, Noel. Uh, thank you for your wonderful description and people have a good idea. So uh, as Noel said, when I work, I I work the treatments as well with the patient who can come in person. And I feel when you have the consultation and you're able to provide the treatments, um, just in Ireland, we are working on it. Maybe in future, we have a proper spa where people can come and stay and have all the treatments and heal. Even just doing a, uh, Abhyanga and Shirodara, it, it helped the healing. It, it, it kind of speed up the process of healing and all. So I thought if people are generally interested, then the therapy side is also very important to learn. And um, so I just kind of put up, uh, I just share a little a screen. So no, if you allow, it's not too much, just a little slide of a name might be new for you people. So just in the written form, you can see the names. So it's just like the four therapies I selected, if, if I call it level one course, because there are so many treatments and it, it is not easier to teach them uh, in under the under the time limit. And also when you're training slowly, it's better to learn them slowly. So the easiest four therapies that I kind of chosen is Abhyanga, which is a oil massage. So in the Abhyanga, you learn you have good foundation through the course how to understand the prakriti the body type vata pitta kapha so then in abhyanga we are talking about choosing the oil the best oil for your when you're doing massage for your patient and certain conditions just just basic condition to cover and what kind of oil you can use and how to do the massage there uh, it's, it's very therapeutic it's nothing like a spa massage i don't like to call ayurveda massage uh, a relaxation spa massage it's all healing and that's what I do with my patients. So it's just all therapy. So to teach that how to do it, to help with arthritis, to help with back pain and neck pain and the certain conditions. So that's what I will be covering. And uh, I'm still working to trying to find the right structure to help people. So there will be a theory session. Uh, so might be recommending people to do some anatomy and physiology by themselves and a little bit, I'll try to cover that. And there will be hands-on if somebody asks if they are not able to come, can they do it online? I don't know how you're going to do hands-on training online. It's really good when you're present and you practice on each other or we have a model to practice on. So that's the really benefit if you're present for the, for the uh, practical session. And then Shirodara is um, another wonderful therapy. 
Uh, let me see if I can go to the nurse. Like Shirodara Dara is, is, is wonderful for the nervous system, especially when people are coming with a lot of uh, vata imbalance, sleep problem, or anxiety and um, less energy because Shirodara Dara is, is kind of connecting to the to the adrenals and, and rejuvenating the whole physiology. So that will be the second therapy. And due to some reason, I can't go on the... I put it on slide mode, it's not moving to the next slide. Let me see. Okay, anyway, it's not moving. So then Nasia is another lot of sinus problem because of the Irish and probably UK weather is very damp weather and sinus problems are very dominant here. So I chose Nasia. It's, we will be doing it in a very safe way because you have to be very careful when you're administrating Nasia to other persons. So we will go into that. And the Katibasti, it is a little pool uh, which is you make a little kind of ring with the dough so you'll be learning how to make the dough how to place it properly so cut is lower back so it's very beneficial in the lower back pain and the hip problems and all that 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 vata because vata is in the lower part of the body so mainly katibasti is for the back pain once you learn katibasti you can do the neck basti you can do the heart basti you can do the um, belly button basti so the procedure is similar enough once you know the basics so i think those four therapy will be uh, enough uh, to to start with the 500 to go with the 500 up course so yeah so we need to find the dates and and uh, uh, the uh, the theory will be online so that's no problem uh, i will see if i need to bring people in one practical session or two practical session uh, because it will be very overwhelming so we need to see the numbers and 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 then the type of room we have to train uh, how many beds i have to train so according to that i need to finalize a practical session so i need to work on that with no yeah okay raj thanks very much for that so just to be i i are you happy with that raji uh yeah was there anything else you wanted to say oh no no so uh it's just the kind of everything as we are saying we just want to put this information out okay. to the people yeah. who want to yeah. see the interest because there's so much to teach as well. So it's just to narrow it down uh, for the beginner level. What is enough uh, if you're going to practice, if you're going to help your patients. So if you have knowledge of these few therapies, uh, it is it is it is good enough to help I, with the, most yeah. of the basic problems that you people are. They'll add massively to anybody's practice if, if, if uh, yeah. obviously people have to want to do them as well, but they will add massively to anybody's practice. I think we can say without doubt that it won't be possible to complete any of those uh, Ayurvedic treatment courses with it online in full yet. You'll have to be in person. You'll have to come along and, uh, and learn those treatments. So now that's a question that's come up. Now, the dates of them and the prices of them, none of that is established, but they will happen in the autumn. There is a demand there already for those courses and we, we I will work with Dr. Ritvinder. They'll probably be done over, you know, maybe take one treatment at a time and do it over a weekend, do the practical session on one day and some hands-on training and the next day come back and do it again because we want to train people yeah it depends on how many yeah, yeah. it'll depends all depend on, on the numbers that are interested in doing it yeah exactly it'll all depend and if there's big numbers maybe some of the other doctors come in or whatever but it'll just depend on the numbers but we'll give you plenty of advance notice on them and they, they will be we, we will hope to do them in, in in the autumn this autumn coming and they, they will be ongoing then depending on the level of interest that we get in our courses you know so there was a lot of other questions. We're going to have a kind of a Q&A session now. Don't worry if you didn't get everything, uh, if you didn't get everything, because, we, you know, we will send a copy of this to, to, to people so that they can go back over it, you know. Uh, so after doing this course, how in depth would you be able to help somebody in a consultation? You know, when I did the Ayurveda course in, in Slovenia, uh, Gordana, the, the lady that did that, kept emphasizing that the most important thing that you're doing with anybody that's sitting in front of you is trying to get their lifestyle right. It's the most powerful thing. It's not the herbs that you're gonna offer them, or it's not even the treatments that you're gonna offer them. It's trying to get them to live in a healthy manner in tune with the rhythms of nature. Even a small basic understanding of Ayurveda is very, very powerful. Even telling somebody, don't be eating your main meal at eight o'clock at nighttime. Eat your main meal in the middle of the day. Even making that change, can have a profound effect on somebody's health. So you should never underestimate the power of Ayurvedic knowledge to change someone's life in a very positive direction. And that's only one little thing, you know? So you can help, to be able to help someone in a consultation, 
I mean, undoubtedly, you'll be able to help someone in a consultation because as we're saying in here, you're treating the individual. So even getting the basics right, if someone comes into you with, I don't know, arthritis or something like that, obviously in the 300 hour course, we'll be looking at the different types of arthritis and the different treatments. But even if you can get them eating properly, even if you can get them going to bed at nighttime, even if you can get them to do an abiyanga in the morning, that may begin to have really profound effects on their health. And the doctors see this all the time, just simple little changes. So, you know, you're going to be, even already the people who have done the seven lesson course would probably be able to give out very, very valuable information to somebody. Because I can tell you, they're not getting this information anywhere else at the moment, you know. And uh, so you can give out very valuable information. The idea of this course is that we want to be able to spread this knowledge out, but spread it out in a very... Uh, professional way or in a very comprehensive way so that you don't go beyond the limits of what you're capable of doing but you're actually capable of doing an awful lot by giving people good advices and that's the idea uh, be behind the course you know so i did notice there was uh Flancis says, if you can't make a weekend for the first course is it not possible to complete the course i would say francis that what we will try to do on the first course is we will try to make them available online for people who the massive preference is that people come for those weekends okay but if there's one weekend out of the whole series of weekends that just for one reason or another you can't make it then we we, we will have flexibility there but it won't be that the whole thing can be done online or anything like that you will need to come on the idea is that you come on the courses and get the training and get to meet the doctors firsthand and that's the ideal thing if, if you can actually do that if you can come along and do that certainly on this on the 300 hour course People will have to come for that week long session and the weekend at the end, because that will be the graduation at the end as well. So, you know, I think you can take it that if, if you can't do that, then we probably say leave it until we have another course or leave it until a time when, when, when you can do another course, you know. But as I say, again, this is all dependent on the on the numbers of people now. I, I know this is June. It's not the best time to be launching a course like this, but uh, really but I thought September would be too late, but we'll get the video out. There's hundreds of other people have been on to me about it and we'll just see what the level of interest is there. Someone asked about who's certifying the course in Ireland. Well, I have to say, first off, is that Ayurveda is not recognized by any government body in Ireland. It's not recognized by the healthcare system. It's not, rec there is no board of certification. There, there is nothing, there's no overseeing, there isn't even an organization of Ayurvedic physicians in Ireland. I think the four doctors that we have here is probably the strongest organization of Ayurvedic physicians, but it, we don't have a, an official organization or anything like that. And in Ireland, you know, you know, there, there, there's nobody to oversee Ayurveda and there's nobody that says, no, you can't say you're an Ayurvedic or you can't give out this information or anything like that. That's just the way it happens to be in Ireland. So there is nobody, this, this, Certific certificate that you will get will be from the Ayurveda Center, which is the company that we, we have in Ireland that promotes Ayurveda, you know. And then the other question that people asked was uh, about getting insurance. So that's, a, that's something that you may need to look into in your own country, wherever you are, okay? And there are different people that do insurance. Now, maybe some of the people doing this course are already insured to see people. Uh, maybe if you're a massage therapist, you're ins insured to do massage, or maybe if you do reflexology, and then you, you can just add this onto your insurance, or maybe you don't even need to add it onto you, to your insurance. But there's different insurance companies out there, um, you know, offering different levels of packages and things like that. I mean, I know in Ireland, even for some of the doctors, they can't get insured to do certain treatments that you can do in India, you know, but uh, so you would need to go to your insurance company if that's if you're going to need insurance to do treatments and stuff or to do consultations and things like that then you know you need to i think there's a company called holistic health in the uk is one of them and i the company in ireland is called brian mullins insurance down really? down in sligo as, as far as i'm aware you know now we haven't gone to them with our courses yet we will go to them with the courses we will give them the structure of the courses and we will get some feedback but they're not the only people doing insurance you know so and again you you, you know if if you're going into practice then you're going to need to look into that and what what qualifications you already have and but i will look into that a bit more as well you know i will look into that a bit more as well so don i, I don't know if there's any other questions coming in there i haven't been able to see them Oh, you're muted. Now, Don, you should be able to unmute. 
great, thanks. Um, and uh, I think <clears throat> I think they're looking for all the dates in an email. That wouldn't be difficult, no. No, that's not difficult at all. I'll send out a recording of this tomorrow and I'll put the dates on it as well, you know, so that's not... Uh... Great, great. Um, so, and uh, FHT in the UK is mostly covers this type of courses, uh, insurance, Chandrika Veda tells us. So that's good. What, what did it say, Don? Sorry, I didn't see it. FHT in the UK. Mostly ah. covers this type of courses in their insurances. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, yeah, Breda Wolf has, has put in uh, Brian Mullins and Sheridan's in Ireland. Um, and uh, we started the business. Um, I think you've answered most of them. Yeah, yeah. Just to give me an idea, just to give us an idea, how many people are interested in doing, just say the first course, forget about the, all the courses, just how many people we have, what, we have 103 people on the call. So if you're interested in it, just put it, just say yes into the chat box. If you're not interested, don't bother putting no, we just, we just count the yeses, you know. So uh, it'll give us uh, sort of an idea based on the number that's on the call. And I know there's a lot of people couldn't make the call. Okay, so we're up at... Uh, we're over 20 anyway. Well, we're up at 33, yeah. Yeah, 36, 37. Okay, so that's very positive. That's, yeah, we're up at 38. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a second question. And I'm just... Uh, okay, Avita, you're in South Africa. That's going to make it a bit hard. I'm going to ask a second question. And so you can forget the first question now. We have a fair idea that a lot of people are interested. The second question is, how many people there are interested in doing the complete 500-hour course? So if you if that's your interest, mm, quite a few. No. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that's quite positive. That's quite positive. Okay. So what we'll do is, I think Dr. Brennan gave a very good comprehensive cover of the of the core of the course structure there. You know, and of of the first course that we're doing. It's up on the website for booking for the hundred euro deposit. I'll get this recording out to people tomorrow to our mailing list and I'll put the dates on the email as well. And we'll start taking bookings and this is June. So I think we'll be able to make a decision about the course by the end of July or mid August. Anyway, we'll be able to make a decision based. If we get the numbers in earlier, we'll make a decision earlier on it. If we have to do a bit more promotion, as I said, it's not the best time in the world to be launching a course like, you know, especially after two years of people being in lockdown, but it seems to be fairly, it just seems to be a very positive result to it. So if we can get, you know, a certain number of people, I think we, 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 we will definitely go ahead with the course. The insurance question, let me look into that a little bit more. Okay, I, I'll do a bit, a bit more research into that. Uh, Dr. Brennan, you were the president of the Ayurvedic Practitioners Association in the UK. Is there, uh, well, maybe I'll ask you that question separately when we're off the call. Yeah, there's no point in going into it now, you know. Uh, have you put on Facebook and Instagram? I haven't put anything there yet. So uh, I will be putting it all. This is just the initial call on it where we're, you know, put, putting it out there, you know. And um, when do you think the treatment courses will run? They'll be in the autumn. They'll, they'll be September, October, November type of time, you know. Uh, Will you cap it at a certain number, Andres? Andres, we definitely will cap it at a certain number. The question is, will we get to that certain number? I'm more worried about the minimum number rather than the maximum number at the moment, <laughs> you know? So we need to get to, I mean, it is really, I have sat down and looked at this over the years and like, it's a lot, a lot of work putting the course together and structure a course, an in-depth course like that. So uh, it's, it's really a minimum number that I'm concerned about that we, we, we need a minimum number. It's great if we do one course, if we get one course done, then and obviously it'll be our first course like this. There'll be a learning process for the people doing it. There'll be a learning process for us. Uh, I think once we have one course under our belt, 
then we can really go strong on, on advertising and getting new people involved and all those type of things, you know. And I think the second course will be much, much easier for us to do because the groundwork will have been done in the first course. And, and you know, we, we, we have, this first course is always the most special one. Even, even the one I did in, in the Alma Mater was the first one they did. They're on their second one now, but there's something special about doing the first course, you know. And um, is there an upper limit to the numbers on the course on nutrition? I, I mean, I can't imagine there being, uh, um, I mean, even from the point of view of running a cookery course and things like that, I mean, I, I think you'd be stopping it off around 100 people, you know. If we ended up getting 200 people, then we'd, we'd organize two venues and have, because we have four vages that can do it. So, I mean, if the, if the demand is there, we, we, we will try to respond to the demand. But as I say, my, my concern at the moment is not the maximum. My concern is getting, the, getting us up to the minimum, you know. And, um, okay, the other thing is that I want to say is that uh, very soon we'll be launching a UK website for Ayurveda as well because you know we're doing we've, we've had a tremendous amount of people because and worked in the UK for so long and has so many patients over there and you know we had a quite a big list of people to invite to our courses in the UK and it really spread Scotland in particular but all over the UK so many people came on our courses and uh, you know we want to expand Ayurveda in in Ireland and Britain. Well, we want to expand it all over the world, but let's start with Ireland and uh, Ireland and Britain for, for, for the beginning, you know? And uh, one of the things I've been thinking about is as we go forward and we attract in new people, that really we should have a, a dedicated UK website uh, that, you know, where our products are priced in sterling as opposed to euros and that, you know, we have a UK address and all that, which we now have as well. So we will be launching a UK website where, where we'll have all this information on it as well. And that we'll be doing that in the next week or two. And then, you know, people, many people are used to dealing with our Ayurveda.ie website, but I often get emails from people saying, you know, oh, I have to pay in euro here or the bank going to do this or that or whatever. And generally, there are no additional charges from the bank. Some, sometimes there are, but I think it would make from an expansion point of view, from going forward, from getting it out there, I'd like to have a UK, a .co.uk website. And also, we want therapists. We want uh, we want practitioners in the UK. We need UK practitioners. I mean, if we can incorporate existing practitioners and help expand Ayurveda through our marketing skills that we have here, that that that's fantastic. We'll do that. But we'd like our own people as well that we can help out. And you know, the whole idea behind this is that if we can get a really strong community of people very interested in Ayurveda, then we can spend much more money on advertising. We can act as a as a, as a kind of a family, we can do mentoring for people. So it's not just that the course is over and then you're out there. We can set up a system where you can, if you have a patient and you're not too sure, you're not 100% sure about the right way to go forward, you'd be able to get in touch with Dr. Richvinder or Dr. Nahid or any of the doctors. And um, we'd have a mentoring process where you could, you know, touch base with people just to, because when you're dealing with people's health, obviously, you know, you want to be given the, the perfect advice to that person. And so we, we can have a, a, a system where we can we can mentor people going forward so that, you know, people feel very confident in what they can do. You know, we can also make all the products available to people and we can give practitioner discounts uh, because obviously if you're buying a lot of stuff and you're sending it on, that's in our interest as well. It increases our turnover. And, you know, we have uh, quite a lot of practitioners that that uh, that you know get a practitioner discount for for our products as well. So it it helps people to to build a career out of the thing. To build you know whether it's a part time or a full time going forward to, to build to build the thing up. And you know really what I'd like to see is what I'd really love to do is seeing some Ayurvedic restaurants opening up. I think if someone out there is in the restaurant business, I think the idea of Ayurvedic restaurants is just using locally grown organic foods. I think the time for that idea has arrived and people would be, I know any of the vegetarian restaurants in Dublin, like Cornucopia and places like that, they're just, you can't get seats in them, you know, but, uh, and so th and that's a great business. Cause as I said, you can't separate diet from, you can't separate diet from health. Dr. Brandon, you look like you're about to say something. Uh, no, I was just looking back on the, on the, on the chats. Yeah. Yeah. We able to be listed as practitioners on the websites. Yeah, we can do that. We can work out systems with people where we can, like we have four, our four practitioners up on the website at the moment, and they're all based in like, we've three in Dublin and one in Cork. And uh, there would be no reason why we can't change the website. I mean, I'd love to have someone going on in, in anywhere in Ireland or the UK, anywhere 
and being able to find an Ayurvedic practitioner within a 20 minute drive of where they live, you know, there, I mean, there's no reason why there shouldn't be thousands and thousands of Ayurvedic practitioners, because if the demand is there, and I, I feel that that demand is common, that, that we're moving in that direction, then why shouldn't there be? I mean, the knowledge that you can give people for their health, I mean, you're not just going in, like it's not a pill for a nil, which is really all we're being offered anywhere else. It's just, uh, you go in, you see a doctor. The, the average time of a doctor's consultation in Ireland is 10 minutes. 10 minutes is the average time. And you pay your 60 euro or your 70 euro or whatever it is, and you get a prescription. You're not being educated. The root of the word doctor is to educate, but you're not being educated. But in Ayurveda, that's what you're doing. We don't see people for less than an hour because you're educating people, you know? So that's what we want. And that this is the knowledge that people want. And actually, I feel that this is the knowledge that people are going to be looking for. So certainly we can develop the website as we go forward. Like we know the value of online now. We, we know the value of it. Before COVID, that dreaded word, okay? Before COVID, I used to run adverts in newspapers for Dr. Brennan, okay? And I, in Drogheda, and I'd say, Come and hear Dr. Brennan speak about natural healthcare, Ayurveda, uh, you know, over 25 years in practice with Ayurveda at 7.30 this time. And either I give the talk for free or I charge maybe 10 euro at the door, okay? And I'd be hoping, hoping to get 20 people in the room, 20 or 30 people in the room. And out of those 20 or 30 people in the room, I'd be hoping that maybe 10 of them would come for a consultation. And I do the consultations in my apartment. Well, I wouldn't do them. Dr. Brennan would do them in my apartment. And the idea is that we'd make enough money to pay the hotel, to pay Dr. Brennan's uh, petrol expenses, and maybe we'd have a few bob left over that we could split between, <laughs> split between the two of us, okay? But that was the reality of the situation. Myself and Dr. Brennan traveled all over Ireland giving talks. And we went, like, it was like going on a road, a road tour, you know? We, we'd go to different places and give talks and things like that. And you'd be hoping to get... 10, 20 people to come out and listen to you. But the whole online thing has just completely changed that dynamic for us. It's completely changed that dynamic. So like we get hundreds, we get six or 700 in some of, some of our webinars. We, we've had a thousand people download our arthritis webinar in the last couple of weeks, you know? So we're getting it out there to bigger and bigger numbers. And then we, we and use, and sorry. And we don't have to face the gales to make it to the talk where nobody else turns up because of the weather. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or getting caught in snow drifts in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to do that either. And it's just such a great way to reach people. But, uh, you know, the person who put that in about, you know, would you have uh, practitioners on the websites and stuff like that? Absolutely, we can do that. You, we could have subsections of a page where, you know, we have the persons, you do, they can click on a map of the UK, let's say, and they pick somewhere. My geography of the UK is not great. So let's say they pick Manchester or Leeds or somewhere like that. And they click on that and they say, oh, there's three practitioners within 50 miles of Leeds or whatever. And they can click on any one of them and it opens up the page and it gives the contact details and, it, you know, what the person is and the person can put their own profile up there. And then hopefully out of that, we can even have a booking system on the on, on the on the website so people can book the thing in, you know? So all of that can be worked out. I mean, I think the way we're gonna get Ayurveda going forward, something special happened on the first series of courses that we ran. I feel something very special happened. We, we built up this community of people and we had a lot of fun and we had a lot of knowledge given out and there was just something very special about those courses that happened at the start. And for me, that was a complete shift for, I mean, myself and Dr. Brennan and Anne Reds Vinder, we've been working in Ayurveda for, well, Don for decades now, you know? So something special happened and we want to continue with that. We want to grow that because this is the, the as I say about Ayurveda, it's a peculiar thing. It's the medicine of the past, but it's also the medicine of the future, you know, and uh, we want to help it on its way. It's kind of the legacy that we want to leave behind for it, you know. Uh, yes, it became like a family, says Sally Hayden. Yeah, absolutely, it did, Sally. It did. And we want to go forward with that, you know, and all of the doctors played their, played their role in that, you know. Anyway, what time are we? It's 10 to 9 at this stage. So that gives you a good idea of... Uh, Okay, you've got an invitation to South Africa there, Dr. Brennan. Would it be, oh. and Dr. Rajvinder, would it be possible for Dr. Rajvinder to maybe do her treatment course over a week or so to accommodate overseas students? Or she and Dr. Brennan can come to South Africa? Okay, well, I'll leave that up to them whether they want to. Uh, will the course go into a lot more debt? Absolutely, Abigail. Absolutely. A lot. Uh, absolutely. 
uh, Abigail, it will. The 300 hour session will go, even the other beginning sessions will go much more in depth. Like the courses we did were brilliant. They were a great start, but they didn't go into the sub doses and all of those things, you know, and we, we, we will be doing all of that, you know. Um, Gene, are you linking it to the consciousness advisory course? No, Gene, that's not one of our courses, you know. I mean, we would be very happy to see people going on to do the Alma Mata course, which is a Maharishi Ayurveda course. That, that would be a, a good thing to do if people can do that. And we've been told that by completing this course, it will give you access to that course, you know. So uh, if we want to become a practitioner, would we have to do the Slovenia course? No, Claire, you wouldn't have to do the Slovenia course. The idea is that you're, we call it a lifestyle coach uh, after the 500 hours that you'd be a lifestyle coach, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to do the Slovenia course if, uh, if, if, if you did it, you know. Uh, Dolores says, my first stop in Dublin is Cornucopia. Uh, are the centres in Rendlesham and Suffolk and Scammersdale and Lancaster are part of the Ayurveda group based in Ireland? Uh, well, I mean, not really officially as such. They're all our colleagues. Like Dr. Brennan and myself have worked with them over the years and we'd be in close contact. But uh, the Ayurveda Centre in Ireland is, is an independent company it's a it's a separate limited company you know i mean we have the common link is that we're all inspired by maharishi mahesh yogi and we sell maharishi ayurveda products and we promote transcendental meditation as well but there's no official corporate link between ourselves i'm not sure if there's an official corporate link between rendlesham and skelmersdale maybe i i don't know that there is or isn't dr brennan is shaking his head saying there isn't you know so uh yeah but we we don't have any official type of of, of link with them you know would we be equipped to recommend herbal remedies after this training? <laughs> yes, Abigail, you would. That's the whole idea of the 300 hour session is that you would, will, will, will be doing, going into the pharmacology of all the different herbs and what they can be used for. So you, you, would, you would gain the knowledge of that, you know. Okay, does anybody, any of the doctors have anything that they want to say? There wasn't too many questions. Dr. Nahid, is Dr. Nahid on? He is indeed, yeah. Let's say hello to Dr. Nahid. We haven't heard from her all night. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Nahid. Hi, Noel. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good, thank you. Very good, very good. How's the weather in Cork? Uh, <laughs> it's it's raining here. Like, it's kind of cold. Uh, not too good. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it's kind of the same as here. It's brightened up a little bit. But anyway, were you on for the whole call? Yeah, I was there since uh, 7.30, so <laughs> I was listening everything. Good. Good, good, yeah, good. and I'm really looking forward, and I really like your concept, which you said that we have to build a community. Like, if if someone needs a help, that like, uh, how could we deal with second case, or like how can I go about with, for example, like someone is having eczema and the it's like recurring again and again, and someone is looking for a mentorship, like any of the vidya would love to go ahead and help and just assess the case case together. So I really like this concept of when you were describing all these things. And yeah. I'm really looking forward that people do come and uh, just explore Ayurveda in more depth because there is a lot of, lot of thing to learn in Ayurveda. I still think that we have to learn every single day. So you'll be surprised. You'll be like, you know, excited to learn so many new things. Yes. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. And I think it is. When people do the 500 hour course, they'll begin to have a glimpse at the depth and profundity of the knowledge of Dr. Nahi, of Dr. Chitrali, and of Dr. Raj. And uh, I think we'll be taking our hats off. Yeah. Someone asks, is there an exam to sit? Yes, yes. After the 300 hour course, after the completion of the 500 hour course, we will, we will have a, a little exam. All right, yeah. It's important that we feel that you have grasped the, the you know the concepts of this you know, uh, so we will have we 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 will have an exam to do at the end, but it'll be mostly continuing assessment to be honest you know it'll be mostly the doctors will be keeping an eye on everybody and you know we'll we'll be going we'll, we'll be doing things as we go on with it and uh, but we 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 will have a, an exam at the end as well you know. Uh, Will, there, will we have to do case studies? Yes, case studies will be part of it as well. Yeah, yeah, we will have to do case studies. I mean, the last section of it is the where last. we... Yeah. Sorry, Don? Uh, Chitrali was saying... No, 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 I was saying the same, like the last uh, course, the Ayurveda coach course, 
So in that, maybe you'll have to do, go with the case studies. Yeah, because if you're going to go out and give advice to people, then we have to train you how to give that advice to people. The doctors have to be, you know, so you, you'll have to see, well, how do you go about doing, how do you go about, someone comes in to see you and they say, you know, I've got this, I've got that, you know, how do you go about addressing them? How do you go about advising them, you know? Are you are you choosing? Are you able to identify where the problem is? Is it bad to pit the kaffa? And you know everything about the person will begin to tell you that you know. And uh, as uh, Brita says, case studies is where the real learning is. Yeah, she's right. She's correct. Yeah, case there no, no, no one can tell you that from his experience and his course. And absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But it's amazing when you develop the knowledge. You know, you even see someone walking into the room, and you can begin to assess. What the problem is going to be you know just by the way they walk the way they speak the way everything about them is telling you something about them you know and uh and there's a question there about uh, mental health and um the reality nicola is that it's a mind body system if it's in the body it's in the mind if it's in the mind it's in the body and ayurveda is helpful for all of these things yeah and certainly some of the treatments that dr rajinder does like shiradara is very good for people with anxiety and things like that you know so um health is a is a big big issue and you know um, myself and dr brennan are both tm teachers as well and we've, we've been teaching tm for a long time and we have a huge belief in that as well and uh actually i'd probably go to say is it's one of the most powerful even ayurvedic techniques that you can do is transcendental meditation you know and uh, or maybe other people are trained in other forms of meditation that they find very good as well but they can have a very positive effect on on on, uh, on people's mental health and, and sally hayden says consultations always calm me down mentally so even having a consultation even getting the pulse taken is we will we will be covering pulse diagnosis in the course as well. Dr. Brennan has already done many pulse diagnosis courses as well, so we will be covering that the basics of pulse diagnosis in the course. You know, are there private treatments in Cork? Yes, there are. You can see Dr. Nahid in Cork, and Dr. Nahid's um, uh, details are on the homepage of our website, ayurveda.ie. So you can go down there and, and, and get Dr. Nahid's email address or phone number. You know. Okay, everybody, I think we've reached the end. It's nine o'clock here. Do any of the doctors have anything they want to conclude with? Thanks, everyone, for your interest. Yeah, uh, go ahead and book to pay the deposit, the 100 euro deposit. I'll send out the email in the morning with the link. We'll see what the response is uh, in, a, in a week or so. And I've seen the basic response. I think I'll have a fairly good idea within a week or so. I'll have a meeting with the doctors and we'll take it forward from there. And uh, Hopefully we'll get, uh, and hopefully this is the start of, of training thousands and thousands of Ayurvedic physicians all over the UK and Ireland and then on to the rest of the world then so we can make a, make a healthier, happier world. Okay, everybody, Jay Guru Dev, thank you very much. Thank and thanks, you. Thanks for coming on. Thank and uh, yeah, fantastic. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Everybody. Thank you.